So, let us uh, try to this time today try to address some of the questions that we have recently come across in the quiz 1. We will start with the last question. The last question is basically to identify what are the errors in the phase diagram and I thought that should be easier because you must have gone through such phase diagrams before. It uh, goes something like this let me see the phase diagram once again for you uh, and then this is what is the phase diagram that is given to you and people ha have been asked uh, to identify what are the errors. Some of our, uh, the errors are very very obvious hmm, because most of the errors that you see here can be easily addressed using one single principle called the phase rule. Okay. All of you know the phase rule says P plus F equal to C plus 1 this is the condensed phase rule and we deal with only condensed phase rule in the whole uh, of uh, uh, solid state phase transformations or solid to liquid phase transformations. As a result you can see that if this is the phase, uh, phase rule that we are talking about this phase rule tells us that whenever you have a transformation taking place at the pure metal end where the number of components is equal to 1 then the phase transformation should uh, deal with 0 degrees of freedom because if components is equal to 1 and if there is a phase transformation where one phase is transforming to another phase p becomes equal to 2 and the moment c is 1 and p is 2 automatically f is to be equal to 0. So, that is what that particular phase rule tells you. So, if c equal to 1 and p equal to 2 obviously f equal to 1 f equal to 0. So, that means the degrees of freedom for any phase transformation for a pure metal where one phase changes to another phase whether it is a solid state phase transformation solid to liquid or liquid to gas whatever and only thing is when you are talking of liquid to gas cases we usually uh, use uh, not the condensed phase rule we use the the uh, generalized phase rule where p plus f equal to c plus 2 and bring in the effect of pressure whereas all these phase diagrams that we talk about pressure is always kept constant because pressure is kept constant we use a condensed phase rule and once we use the condensed phase rule for any pure component it's like for a pure metal this has to hold hold good and if this holds good then automatically you will see that this is one of the major error there you see that here solid to liquid transformation is taking place over a range of temperature. It cannot occur over a range of temperature because solid to liquid phase transformation again there is a solid involved there is a liquid involved. So, there are two phases that are involved and when we are talking of a pure metal there is number of components is 1 and if number of components is 1 obviously, f has to be 0. That means, solid to liquid transformation for any pure metal should occur at a fixed temperature it cannot occur over a range of temperature, but it can occur over a range of temperature for an alloy that is what we see in a isomorphous that is what we see even for an alloy of this composition let us say. Any alloy of that composition you will see there is something called a liquidus there is something called a solidus and there is a temperature range between the two and this temperature range between the two basically means that there is one degree of freedom and that 1 degree of freedom comes because c equal to 2. The moment c equal to 2 and p equal to 2 then f has to be 1. So, if you put c as 2 and p as 2 then f equal to 1 and that is what you see here. So, here you cannot because we are talking of pure component a on one side pure component b on the other side here you need to see that this actually has to join each other. this is first. The second thing that you see is that the eutectic horizontal that you see here 
where a liquid is giving alpha plus beta. Hmm? You see that it is an inclined eutectic. Whenever you see inclined means that eutectic for various compositions in this alloy is occurring as a function of temperature. So, that again is against the phase rule. Again phase rule tells that whenever you have three phases involved in a reaction, eutectic is one such a reaction where liquid is giving alpha plus beta. So, there are three phases are involved. So, whenever liquid gives alpha plus beta the p equal to 3 and the number of components c, c is how many? We are talking of a binary alloy. So, c has to be 2 then f has to be 0. F 0 basically means that everything that is associated with that reaction is invariant, is fixed. That means, temperature is fixed, the composition of liquid that undergoes the eutectic reaction is fixed and the composition of the two solids that are coming out of the liquid are also fixed. Here you see that the composition of the solid, two solids is fixed, but the composition of the liquid which is undergoing the eutectic reaction is not fixed. You see that the eutectic reaction appears to be occurring over a range of composition as if any composition that you choose uh, that all of those liquids are going to give you alpha plus beta and that again defies this phase rule where you see that the degrees of freedom are 0. When I say degrees of freedom are 0, only one single uh, composition of the liquid can undergo a eutectic reaction. You cannot have any liquid composition and think that it will undergo eutectic reaction and that is the reason why I told you earlier also. For example, if you have a eutectic reaction If you ask me what would happen if I choose a hypo eutectic composition, whether this hypo eutectic composition uh, the, the liquid the alloy composition that I am starting with is this composition which is different from the eutectic composition, then how do you say sir this alloy also there is a eutectic reaction taking place in this alloy. Uh, how do you say that liquid can have only one single composition? In principle I can choose any alloy here alloy here, alloy here, alloy here, all of them will undergo eutectic reaction. Am I right? From this point to this point, every composition will undergo eutectic reaction, but incidentally all the compositions that you are choosing, the liquid that undergoes the eutectic reaction has only one single composition that is this. Even if you choose this composition called C 1, by the time this liquid reaches the eutectic temperature that liquid will have only this composition. It will not have the composition with which you have started with. You are starting with your alloy composition as that. The moment alpha comes out of this, the liquid composition changes to such an extent that by the time you reach the eutectic temperature, the liquid that is left out after some alpha has precipitated out, that liquid will have this composition and it is that liquid which undergoes the eutectic reaction. So, whichever composition you choose within that eutectic horizontal, in all the cases whether it is a hypo eutectic or a hyper eutectic, the liquid that undergoes eutectic reaction is always this liquid only and that is the reason, uh, the reason for that is that the eutectic is invariant. So, that is the reason why this is the if you think this is the second error in this, this is the first error, the third error is this and both of them are related to only one single phase rule related to the eutectic. Uh, the phase rule for the eutectic, when you apply the phase rule to eutectic, it tells you that in a binary system, that is why we always talk about uh, uh, a binary eutectic in a binary system, uh, uh, what I mean, uh, sorry, uh, a ternary eutectic in a binary system. At when I say a ternary eutectic, basically it means one liquid giving you two phases, there are three phases that are involved. So, you can say simply a eutectic in a binary system is invariant, but a eutectic in a ternary system need not be invariant. But there are special eutectics in a ternary systems, where one liquid gives you three solids 
one liquid giving you three solids there are eutectics like that available in uh, ternary phase diagram. Such a uh, eutectic again would be invariant because there the p will be equal to how many? 4 not 3 there are 4 phases involved and the number of component c is 3. If c is 3 and p is 4 then f has to be 0 again that means that particular eutectic reaction will happen at a fixed temperature and all the 4 phases will have fixed compositions. They cannot have any composition of their choice the liquid of a particular composition containing so much of A, so much of B, so much of C will give you alpha plus beta plus gamma and each of them will have certain fixed amounts of A, B, C inside them and that is what is a ternary uh, 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 eutectic in a ternary phase diagram. Okay. So, this is something which one has to remember. So, that is the third one. Then there is a, a, a fourth issue which comes with respect to this you see a miscibility gap there. Uh, the miscibility gap basically means that a one phase is splitting into two phases is not it. A one phase splitting into two phases means a miscibility gap should always be enclosed in a single phase domain only. You cannot talk of a miscibility gap in a two phase domain. What you see here is a two phase domain alpha plus beta in a two phase domain you cannot have a miscibility gap, because miscibility gap basically means alpha 1 plus alpha 2. You can have a miscibility gap here possible inside the alpha, inside the beta if you want you can have a miscibility gap, but not inside a two phase field, because that defies the whole concept of miscibility gap miscibility gap basically means one single phase which is a single phase at high temperature when I bring it to lower temperature there it is splitting into two phases basically because uh, the delta H is positive. And at low temperatures the delta H dominates the T delta S terms and as a result the free energy curve will have a tendency like that. And this if I take it to higher temperature at higher temperature T delta S dominates and as a result the free energy curve will not be like this, but the free energy curve will become something like this. And the moment you become uh, you get a free energy curve like that then it becomes a single phase. So, that is why at higher temperature in any two phase field in any uh, miscibility gap at high temperatures you get a single phase. And this single case phase at low temperature because T delta S term being smaller because T itself is smaller. So, delta H dominates and this you will get only when delta H is positive. Delta H for the solid should be positive to be able to get a miscibility gap and it should be sufficiently positive to be able to overcome the T delta H. That is why in some cases you may have what is called a miscibility gap at sub zero temperatures at up to room temperature you may see everything is solid solution, but if you go take it to further lower temperatures where actually the T delta S term is much smaller because T is very smaller and the delta H is uh, uh, positive though positive is not highly positive. The amount of uh, uh, the actual absolute value of delta H is going to decide how big is the miscibility gap the, the this temperature that you are going to see. Uh, where the miscibility gap um, gap closes the miscibility gap clo can close here or the it can close here below the room temperature depends on the particular system and it can happen when the delta H is very small. And if it is very close to 0 you may not have any miscibility gap at all. So, that is what you see that. So, the moment you see a miscibility gap uh, it has to be there inside a single phase because the meaning of closure of miscibility gap means once I cross that I have a single phase and in this phase diagram I do not have a single phase. So, that is why that is the fourth error in this. The fifth error is a little more difficult for you to see and I, I, I do not know how many of you have come across this is the we always say uh, a two phase uh, uh, a boundary between any two phases. Uh, 
should enter into a single uh, into a two phase field rather than entering into a single phase field. What does that mean? Okay. Let us try to look at it from the free energy concept. In fact, this is one of the uh, ways to understand why an iron carbon diagram is different from iron cementite diagram. If I draw uh, uh, two phase region at a given temperature, let us now draw at this temperature the free energy composition diagram. If I draw the free energy composition diagram at that temperature, what you see is that you have an alpha, you have a beta. Am I right? Huh? So, if you look at this, this common tangent that I am going to draw is going to decide uh, that this is the composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta, this is the composition of beta in equilibrium with alpha. Am I right? Huh? Now, if you look at uh, this, if you extrapolate this to a higher temperature, if this is the type of uh, we will erase some of these, so that it becomes more clear to you. So, we will draw it uh, everything perfectly now, accepting this particular problem. So, we have now a phase diagram where you have a horizontal, okay, the eutectic reaction is horizontal, then the second thing is you have the eutectic composition is also a fixed composition. Then we have a situation that the melting of the pure A happens at a fixed temperature. So, that is also taken care, then we do not have a miscibility gap here, accepting that we have a situation like this. That is the last error that we are talking about and this if I extrapolate this. Okay. And uh, what is this line? What is that line? Can you tell me? Solidus of alpha, very good. What does that give you? What is this? What does that tell you? I will draw with a color. What does this tell us? Tells you? Huh? common tangent between liquid and solid and anything beyond that fine so that is the definition of solidus solidus uh, anything else composition of alpha in equilibrium with liquid at all temperatures at various temperatures it gives you the composition of alpha whatever you have said is right i don't say wrong okay the other attribute of that line is that it gives you the composition of alpha uh, at any given temperature in equilibrium with liquid. So, now if I look at a particular temperature, draw a temperature something like this, we are looking at this temperature. At that temperature, if I am looking at, uh, I draw a free energy composition diagram. In principle, if I draw it, at that temperature what is stable? Alpha up to this composition, alpha plus liquid at, at am I right? And if you go farther, you will get a beta, am I right? So, in such a case, now let me draw that, this we know. So, if I draw, this is an alpha phase, you have a liquid and you have a beta phase and alpha plus beta is not stable at that temperature, am I right? Alpha plus beta is not stable at that temperature. So, as a result the liquid curve should be below the alpha and beta that has to be understood. So, if I draw beta here, so this is the alpha curve, this is the liquid curve, this is the beta curve, am I right? The way I draw will be in such a way that uh, the stable states will be alpha and liquid and liquid and beta not the alpha plus beta. If this is above than these two curves, that means uh, that I am at a temperature where the liquid is actually not stable. 
both alpha plus beta are stable. Am I right? So, now if this is the case, now if I draw a common tangent between alpha and this and another common tangent between these two. Now, I get these compositions the 1, 2, 3, 4. Each of these compositions we have already talked about it earlier. I will still just for the sake of completion I will say this is composition of alpha in equilibrium with liquid. This is composition of liquid in equilibrium with alpha. This is composition of liquid in equilibrium with beta. This is composition of beta in equilibrium with liquid. Am I right? Clear Rajkumar? Okay. So, if that is the case now at the same temperature if I am extrapolating this curve what does this curve tell me? Now, tell me we have said already what does this curve tell us. Now, if I take this curve what does this give us? With can you repeat what you said? In equilibrium with beta, it cannot be in equilibrium with alpha plus beta. What is the meaning of that? Composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta. Am I right? So, this line always that is what we call it as solvers line. Solvers line always gives you this on the left solvers line gives you composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta, the right solvers line will give you composition of beta in equilibrium with alpha. Am I right? So, now if I am extrapolating this to a higher temperature such that I come to this temperature of my interest. At that temperature this point is composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta. Now, let us see at that phase, uh, free energy composition diagram what is the composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta. If I want to do uh, know that what should I do? I draw a common tangent between alpha and beta draw it let us draw that. So, let us draw a common tangent between alpha and beta and see where these two touch each other. When I see that you will see that this uh, uh, the common tangent which is drawn from beta to alpha will touch the alpha at some composition like this and that I would call it as C alpha in equilibrium with beta. And the geometry of these curves is such that this common tangent point where which is C alpha beta will always be higher in B content than C alpha liquid. Why? Because beta is a, at a higher level, beta curve is at a higher level than the liquid curve, liquid is at a lower level than the beta. Why? Because at that temperature liquid is more stable because at that temperature liquid being more stable liquid curve has to be lower than the beta curve and because one curve is lower and another curve is higher. Now, when I am drawing common tangents it is not possible for the um, common tangent between beta and alpha to have a composition to the left of the uh, alpha and liquid it has to be always to the right of the alpha liquid. So, that means what C alpha beta is higher than C alpha liquid in terms of percentage B. It has to be that way looking at the free energy composition diagram and this you will know only if you look at the free energy composition diagram. Now, so that means that this what does what do you call this composition? This means the composition of alpha in equilibrium with a metastable phase because beta is a metastable phase at that temperature. The composition of alpha in equilibrium with a metastable phase is always higher than the composition of alpha in equilibrium with a equilibrium phase. So, this is true for any type of phase diagrams. The composition of any one single phase in equilibrium with a stable phase is always lower in terms of uh, the solute content when compared to the composition in equilibrium with a metastable phase uh, state this we are going to immediately see with an example of iron carbon diagram. So, now if that is the case 
this composition what does this tell you? If I extrapolate this composition it is telling that C alpha beta is for me this is C alpha liquid at that temperature at the temperature this is the C alpha liquid this is the C alpha beta. So, this tells you that C alpha beta is lower than C alpha liquid in terms of solute which is wrong. Whereas, if I uh, if I draw the solvers line like this and if I extrapolate the solvers line I can clearly see that this particular composition now which is nothing but the extrapolation of the alpha solvers that means, this is the composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta. So, the composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta now is higher than the composition of alpha in equilibrium with liquid and that satisfies the free, free energy composition diagram for that particular temperature. As a result this kind of curve is not possible. So, you cannot draw a solvers line like this you have to draw a solvers line like this. So, that the extrapolation should always that is why in uh, in other uh, easy fashion what people say is that the extrapolation of a solvers line to higher temperatures should always end up into a two phase field rather than ending up into a uh, single phase field. Whenever this extrapolation goes into a single phase field you get into a problem. So, the extrapolation should always lead into a two phase field this is a two phase field liquid plus alpha field. So, that is what you will see from this and for that you need to understand this free energy composition diagram. And now, if you look at this I draw uh, use the same concept to iron carbon diagram. We are all aware of iron cementite phase diagram. Let us say let us draw the iron cementite phase diagram ok. Any how many of you remember? can somebody come and draw iron uh, cementite phase diagram supposed to be the bread and butter of metallurgists uh, ok. Ok draw it. <coughs> my dear friend you are right in the diagram, but yes. can you look at the scale and give me some idea. What is this composition in an iron carbon diagram? 2 percent. What is this composition in iron carbon diagram? 0 0.5 0.5 not 0.35 0.5. So, you have put a point uh, 2 percent very close to point, uh, point 0.5 that is wrong that is the only mistake that I see in this phase diagram. And sem second uh, mistake that I also see is what is this composition point 0.8 point and your point 0.5 is greater than point 0.8. So, always you have to whenever though you are drawing a schematic diagrams you have to have some idea of uh, the, the scale it need not be exactly to scale but you should have some feeling for it. No, that is fine why need it ok <laughs> do not shrink it draw a <laughs> draw along because even that anyway. You are, you are not using engineering drawing. 
<laughs> okay, forget it. I, I I understand that you know, but uh, you are not able to draw it to scale. I will try to do that. <coughs> okay. This is horizontal. If it does not look like, please forgive me. Another important thing that you should also remember is when you drew this, this segment is equal to the segment in your diagram, they are not and this is point 1, this is point 1 8, this is point 5. So, that also has to be kept in mind. Uh, so, simply just do not draw uh, any way you want, after that same you know. one has to be careful in drawings. Uh, so, now come back to point 8 again there is a problem here. So, something like this uh, we will draw it something like this fine to some extent we have tried, we cannot really try to a great extent. So, this is what is the diagram that we are talking about and, and we have here again a F E 3 C phase we call it. So, this is liquid this is liquid plus gamma, this is gamma, this is liquid plus F E 3 C and this is gamma plus F E 3 C and this is alpha plus F E 3 C, this is alpha and this is delta and this is liquid plus delta, this is delta plus gamma. So, that is what is the phase. Now, if I look at uh, how an iron carbon diagram should look like, it also up to this why we should uh, bother about it, we should bother about it because we know certain grey cast irons when I solidify I get carbon, I get graphite instead of F E 3 C is not it. So, that means I need to understand what is the equilibrium between this liquid which is giving you the graphite the graphite that is coming out should be in equilibrium with the liquid. So, that means, some equilibrium between the graphite and liquid also should be understood uh, and that will it affect the phase diagram. So, for example, if I take a eutectic where liquid is giving you gamma plus F E 3 C and look at the other eutectic where this is liquid is giving you gamma plus graphite, will these two eutectics have the same temperature? Will these two eutectics will have the same eutectic composition or not? What does that what does it depend on? That depends on exactly the free energy composition diagrams. If I look at some temperature where for example, if I am talking about at a temperature let us look at this temperature for that case. If I am looking at that temperature where I have a gamma plus F E 3 C okay, and liquid is giving you gamma plus F E 3 C. I have brought the liquid to this temperature hmm, and I am looking at that or I am looking at, at this temperature for example, uh, where liquid plus F E 3 C is there any temperature you can consider. Let us look at this temperature let us say if I am looking at that temperature I will see what would happen. Now, let us look at this temperature, this I call it as T 1 temperature. At T 1 temperature I have what is the equilibrium, uh, what do I have? I have gamma plus F E 3 C, but F E 3 C is not a stable phase. So, in principle what is the equilibrium phase mixture at that temperature? It should be gamma plus graphite, 
actually it should be gamma plus graphite instead of that I have gamma plus Fe 3 C. Now, let us look at uh, the equilibrium between gamma Fe 3 C and graphite and if I look at that what I see is that I have three phases. So, I should be able to draw a free energy curve with the three phases. If I draw that one is gamma this is gamma. Now, what about Fe 3 C? Fe 3 C is a an intermetallic compound okay, line compound, line compound with 6.3 percent carbon. So, and the other end I will put it as carbon pure carbon let us say that is my graphite. If this is pure iron, this is pure carbon 100 percent carbon that means graphite. Uh, whereas, Fe 3 C is somewhere here let us call Fe 3 C somewhere here let us say though it is not exactly to scale let us look at that. If that is the case then if I am looking at the uh, free energy curve of Fe 3 C how should it be? It should be a narrow free energy curve. So, that means it should be a free energy curve which should look like this at that composition of 6.67 am I right. Now, in comparison to the Fe 3 C where should be the free energy for graphite? It should be lower because graphite is more stable than cementite and where will it be? It will be on the right extreme where carbon is this is a pure carbon. So, the free energy of graphite will be simply nothing but one point somewhere on this like whenever we are talking about free energy of pure metals it is nothing but this what is this point this is nothing but free energy of pure iron in the gamma form at that temperature. Similarly, free energy of graphite at that temperature pure carbon is some point here. If I take that now if I draw common tangents I will see that there is a common tangent between gamma and Fe 3 C. There is also a common tangent between gamma and graphite and if I look at this I will see that this common tangent and this common tangent will not be the same. That means, the composition of gamma in equilibrium with Fe 3 C is different from the composition of gamma in equilibrium with graphite and it is always the composition of uh, uh, gamma in equilibrium with graphite will have a lower solute content, lower carbon content when compared to the composition of gamma in equilibrium with cementite because cementite is a metastable phase. So, the composition of gamma in equilibrium with the stable graphite will have a lower carbon content when compared to the ga gamma in equilibrium with the metastable Fe 3 C. That means, at that temperature if I find out if I want to uh, find out what what is this composition what is this point at the temperature what is this point. Yes not in Fe 3 C in equilibrium with Fe 3 C gamma is not inside Fe 3 C sorry. Okay. So, this line tells me this line tells me the composition of gamma in equilibrium with Fe 3 C am I right. So, that means, this point is what this point according to me is this point according to the free energy composition diagram it is this point is that point at that temperature because we are drawing it at that temperature. Now, if I want to see uh, locate the composition of gamma in equilibrium with graphite it will be somewhere on the left side somewhere here. And if I do it for various temperatures you will see that at all temperatures it will be to the left only. So, that means, if I you know, find out for various temperature these points and join them as a line you will see that this is what happens. This is what is iron uh, this is what is gamma is it a solvus line or a solidus line solvus. This is a gamma solvus in equilibrium with graphite this is the gamma solvus in equilibrium with cementite. So, you have a different solvus now and similarly if I do the same thing here. 
for the liquid and F E 3 C and instead of liquid plus F E 3 C I want to consider liquid plus graphite let us say. If I consider liquid plus graphite I exactly get the same thing excepting that this gamma curve is replaced with liquid curve cementite will be there and graphite will be there and graphite will always be at any given temperature graphite will always have a lower free energy than a cementite at any given temperature because graphite is more stable than F E 3 C. So, this curves this common tangents are not going to really get affected the exact positions will get affected, but the relative positions is never going to be affected. The relative position always tells that the composition of any phase liquid or gamma or alpha in equilibrium with uh, graphite will always have a lower carbon content when compared to in equilibrium with the cementite. If that is the case then I will see that this will be the liquid liquidus in equilibrium with the graphite. If this is the liquidus in equilibrium with cementite, this is the liquidus in equilibrium with graphite. And now, if I now look at what is uh, and similarly, if I can I can also draw I will have this and I will also have this all the pink curves that you are seeing are all either the solvus lines or the liquidus line in equilibrium with graphite. All the yellow lines that you see here are all in equilibrium with cementite. Now, let us look at what about the reaction temperature eutectic reaction. If I look at this reaction and if I look at this reaction which reaction should uh, be lower temperature which reaction should be higher temperature which one graphite. Because uh, when I am thinking of the reverse reaction of this cementite plus gamma giving you liquid because cementite is a metastable phase it wants to convert into a stable state at a lower temperature. So, the melting point of the uh, cementite gamma eutectic is lower than the melting point of the graphite gamma eutectic. So, graphite gamma eutectic will have a higher eutectic temperature cementite gamma eutectic will have a lower eutectic temperature because it is a metastable eutectic this is a stable eutectic this is a metastable eutectic and that is the reason why you would see you would see this so basically this curve gets connected sorry I would I would not draw it that way. Wherever this curve, wherever this pink touches this point, this curve, the gamma, gamma solidus with the liquid, there you will see, and this one will remain, and this which is like this now would get shifted to this which get shifted to this point. So, you will see that the eutectic composition also will shift to the left because of that and this curve will come and touch this. Okay. So, the eutectic composition because of this curve being left side. So, you will see that sorry all pink I should draw this is the iron carbon diagram now this will be the iron cementite diagram where you will see the eutectic composition will be this and this one the eutectic composition will be this. And similarly you would also see that the composition of uh, uh, maximum composition of carbon soluble in gamma and carbon soluble in graphite both of them will be different and the same thing holds good here also you will see that the eutectoid also will shift and you will see that eutectoid composition will be like this and whereas, this will be the eutectoid. So, both the eutectoids will change and what does not change is these, these lines 
these lines will not change can you tell me why and this whole portion does not change because there is no cementite involved there there is no graphite there is no cementite there wherever cementite and graphite come into picture that portion alone gets modified in this it is only liquid giving gamma plus delta so there is no other reaction so the that means the eutectic reaction gets modified the peri, uh, eutectoid reaction gets modified but the peritectic reaction does not so this is how you can understand that thermodynamics particularly free energy composition diagrams can help us to understand this so that you know the whether the eutectic reaction in a in a iron graphite occurs at a lower temperature or at a higher temperature and the eutectic composition also what is the composition that i should choose if i want to get 100% eutectic mixture in a iron graphite uh, system or in a iron cementite system obviously that will be different and unless you really calculate this uh, thermodynamically and get these compositions you will not be able to get a 100% eutectic mixture if you are interested in it okay so this is something which is what is the uh, one of the points that uh, we have it in the the second thing that the first question asks you is about nano what happens if i take a nano particle and melt it i think most of you know that uh, the melting point will not be the same as a normal metal and that can be easily seen from a g versus t diagram if i draw it if i draw a g versus t diagram for a solid and a liquid the moment i say uh, instead of uh, a bulk solid i am taking a nano particle of a solid we know that nano particle of a solid has a higher surface energy and the moment i add this surface energy to the bulk volume free energy the free energy overall free energy of this solid is higher with respect to the bulk solid so that means i will have a free energy curve of the solid shifted to higher temperature now a higher value of the free energy the so solid uh, bulk solid will have a free energy decided by this and the nano crystalline solid will have a higher free energy the moment i put a higher free energy you would automatically see that the intersection is now liquid is not changing liquid uh, there is we are not talking of a nano liquid here okay so liquid free energy curve will not change the moment you change the solid free energy curve you would see that it intersects at a lower temperature and that's the reason why you would see a nano particle melts at a lower temperature but there can be a different situation which is what is the second part of that question that you see if this nano particle is embedded in a matrix which has a higher melting point if the matrix is a, let's say imagine a situation i have a lead particle inside an iron matrix or an aluminum matrix and now i am heating this and this lead is a nano particle nano particle of lead embedded in an aluminum lot of people are doing research on this uh, what happens what is called superheating uh, once you start heating this well will this lead melt at 321 degrees which is uh, supposed to be its normal melting point or some other temperature when you look at or will it melt at lower temperature than its <coughs> normal melting point or will it melt at a higher temperature than its normal melting point that's where you see that the moment i start heating it both this solid and this solid as a function of temperature there is an expansion isn't it every solid expands as you heat it uh, there is something called coefficient of thermal expansion and this coefficient of thermal expansion when you look at it a material which has a higher melting point will have a lower coefficient of thermal expansion as a result it applies certain pressure on the on the solid on the nano particle the moment a pressure is applied you see that this under under high pressure if you look at the clausius clapeyron whenever you apply a pressure whenever the delta v uh, between solid to liquid 
when a solid is going to liquid if it, there is a volume expansion under that conditions whenever a pressure is applied you see a solid is more stable okay because solid occupies less volume than the liquid so you will see the stability becomes actually this once that happens you will see that the melting point goes up always you see this happening whenever you take an embedded part nanoparticle an embedded nanoparticle melts at a higher temperature than its normal melting point it's because of the pressure effects and in principle people can actually calculate what are the pressure effects how does the free energy change as a function of pressure basically we all remember g is a function of temperature pressure concentration isn't it in the normal free energy expression that we talk about we don't talk about this because we are fixing it if we don't fix it it will change and once you do that you will actually see this happening and that is an explanation for that particular question sir if it were this much huh? this much instead of let's say nano yeah anything any metal inside another met, uh, higher temperature metal if the outside metal matrix is a lower uh, melting point then this problem does not come because by the time you reach the melting point of this that has melted already so there is no problem the problem comes that you have reached the melting point of that but the outside has not melted that is still solid and that applies pressure on this and that pressure influences the free energy and once it influences the free energy the melting point gets influenced okay